I'm blown away by how engaged you've been with my Galaxy S24 Ultra content. You send me so many great questions and instead of keeping you waiting till my next review to answer them, I decided to do this video and answer everything you want to know. And you know, as I always say, you know, without you, without this community, this channel doesn't really exist. So this is a way of me saying thank you to all your support so far. And one final disclaimer, if you like, is that I'm not an expert. Sometimes answering these questions is how I learn as well. So let's go through it together. I have structured this video in sections so that if you want to go to a specific area, they're all organized here for you. How do the cameras compare on social media? Great question. Honestly, I have some reservations about the selfie camera when it comes to this phone and any other smartphone, to be fair. So we're here in Piccadilly Circus and testing the new S24 Ultra. And one of the things that you asked me to test, and sorry about the noise as well, was the quality of the front camera on Instagram in particular. Samsung promised that they'd done something to improve it. And the first impressions were very good in terms of quality when using 4K 60 though. 4K 30 gets really pixelated and the sky gets blown out as well on Instagram. If you're using it handheld, it's a no-no. It's very unstable, not great. Audio was fantastic though, noise rejection. Like I was in Piccadilly Circus in London, very busy, very noisy, you know, cars, people, you know, sirens, everything. But it really isolated me when I was talking. Really excellent audio, but, and here's where I think Samsung might be missing a trick. You know, in the announcement for this phone, they said that they worked with Instagram, you know, to make the app for the S24 Ultra. How then is one of the best features of the S24 Ultra, the S Pen, not working with the camera app inside Instagram? I'd love to be able to use the air gestures inside Instagram. That would be awesome. Shut up. Yes, I got my S Pen somewhere. Maybe that's coming, right? Who knows? My final recommendation, if you're recording for social media, Use this little guy here, the auto framing button. Where is it? Not a hundred times, dude. The hell? You get the idea. Game changer, depending on what you're recording for Instagram. This one made me laugh a little bit. Why on earth would people love vivid or unrealistic pictures or colors? Nature is beautiful. Well, not today it isn't. <laughs> I see what you mean though, uh, about the kind of the fakery and the sort of the, the facade that we see sometimes on social media. But when it comes to the S24 Ultra, I have to be honest, previously Samsung phones were known as the unrealistic or oversaturated phones right so i think now they went maybe too far the other way and it became a little bit in my opinion uh, washed out the display in itself was washed out but now with the february update it has been a lot easier to control and tweak the colors a little bit to make it a little bit more natural but hey that's the beauty of having a device that is flexible right because if you don't like that sort of vividness aspect you can tweak it to make it less vivid shout out to the video quality on this phone that 4k 30 there was just amazing honestly when i was watching this back on this phone i was like and this is my honest thought i was looking at it going this looks like an iphone video as in it was really really good no trickery no ai just excellent video quality i've been getting lots and lots of questions about this case as well this is from today's sponsor spitaka they've just launched this model this is the caseless thin is very very thin in sunset moonrise and black colors it's an aramid fiber case all the cases that i've been trying this year this has got to be the most stylish right this case will protect your device against scratches and maybe you know kind of some knocks but Drop protection is not what this case is for. I actually scratched my S24 Ultra on the first day, which still hurts. One thing that would have saved my phone is a case, and these cases are just beautiful. One of the things that I love about them is that you can still enjoy the titanium frame, right? You can see the finish still here and enjoy that. Cause you know, some cases you put them on, yes, they'll protect your phone, but you kind of forget, you know, what color you went for. And you kind of forget that some of these nice touches of the design, right? The, this titanium frame is really beautiful to look at. And I think that's a really nice touch. When you look closer into this beautiful camera module protection here, you can read here in very discreet lettering, I was a phone case and I appreciate that you know they're using less plastic and recycling old cases really good to see it does feel great in the hand they use an anti-slip feature here for added grip and even though they are extremely thin at one millimeter and very very light they're still very durable and feel quite tough as well very precise cutouts throughout for all the pores the S Pen they just feel classy you know compatible with MagSafe 2 which is awesome and these guys you know they've been around for a while you know the great quality. And to get yours today, there's a link down below for you. Or if you're watching this from a TV, just scan the QR code here. And thanks so much, Pitaka, for making this video possible. This comment here, call my eye, is not so much a question, but I thought it was a really cool tip and it came from two of you. We do know that there seems to be an issue with the camera when it comes to the moving subject. I don't know, this seems to be a historic thing. I honestly don't see that problem too much. I have seen it though. I do have a theory on this and I came up with my own sort of workaround in the pro mode and changing the shutter speed manually. But the idea here, which I thought was quite ingenious is to record a video and then take a snap within the video now i know it sounds cumbersome and someone else commented you know even use 8k video to take that snap 
I think that's a really good idea. I mean, I do enjoy single take. Now, let's be real for a moment, right? I love the creativity here of some of you, but Samsung, they do need to sort this out. I don't think, you know, consumers are clearly very clever and will come up with all sorts of ways to achieve what they want, but they shouldn't need to do that. Now, here's a question that I get a lot, which is you know, about the iPhone 15 Pro Max comparing it with the S24 Ultra. Have I done a camera comparison between these two? Yes, I did. You know, that video nearly killed me because it was so much hard work and there's so much to cover, you know, about these two devices because you know, they are the top of the pile, right, when it comes to consumer smartphones. But now with both devices having had, you know, a recent update, I will be doing a round two soon. But yes, if you want to see how they compare, there's a card here for you for that one. And before I forget, if you are enjoying this video, leave it a thumbs up. It really means a lot. Sharing this video as well with someone who loves tech and loves gadgets would really help. And, you know, we're so close to 100k. It would be awesome to reach that milestone with you here. What about the signal? I assume you mean like connectivity, right? And I think when it comes to GPS and 4G, 5G, whether I'm here in the countryside or when I'm busy, like in London, a very busy place, I do get very different experiences, but it's not being different, better or worse than the S23 Ultra or even the latest iPhone. But when I'm at home and in the studio, is really where you can actually see some of the benefits of having some controls in the configuration as well. This is not new and you could do this before on the S23 Ultra as well, but I'll give you a tip here in case you're having any connectivity issues at home. When you go into the Wi-Fi, just click on the three dots here and go into Intelligent Wi-Fi. When you're there, scroll all the way to the bottom and tap Intelligent Wi-Fi a few times, maybe seven or eight times, until Connectivity Labs comes up. In here, it's gonna show you the Wi-Fi bands it's been connecting to, but more importantly, it lets you inspect your home Wi-Fi. So at the very least, you can tell whether your route is poorly configured or maybe it needs moving to a different location. I have heard people saying that in congested places, like in busy locations, like you might be at a stadium, at a concert, the 15 Pro Max will struggle more than the S24 Ultra. I haven't qualified that myself. You know, when I use my 15 Pro Max uh, in London, next to the S24 Ultra, they both get pretty much the same reception. Now, this one about the display here is not so much a question again, but I think it needs addressing because so many people have been mentioning this to me and it's to do with the display looking grainy. I haven't seen this myself, but for my sins, I went down this Reddit rabbit hole and I found that there was definitely a lot of people experiencing this and there seems to be a relation if you restored settings using smart switch, which is weird, right? But when you look into it, it starts to make sense. If you're still seeing this yourself, resetting the accessibility settings to default settings will fix that for you. That was a lot of s -s 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 -s. And here's another question about the display colors, which is very relevant given the latest update. What levels of the three levels of vividness is equal to the S22 Ultra? Now, that device was an extremely vivid phone. You know, from memory, that was a really punchy, sometimes, you know, unnatural colors. But to answer the question, in my quick tests, the levels that we actually get on this vividness slider is only two levels. You know, it looks like it's three, but level one doesn't really do anything. It just leaves things as they were. Level two then slightly adds more saturation, almost unnoticeable. I, you know, at one point I was like, what, what is this doing? And level three does that again, but at level three, you do notice a difference. Okay, do you know what? They fixed it. I mean, this is literally my first few seconds of looking at it. It does look more vivid. Yeah. It looks better. The thing is, at level three, I found content like Netflix and YouTube, you know, to start to have maybe too much green and red, which is something that I noticed on my S23 Ultra before. So I did what I normally do with my S23 Ultra, which is manually tone down green and blue, you know, just because that's my preference, you know, to keep things looking vivid, but not fake. If I just leave everything on the max, it did remind me a little bit of the S22 Ultra, but I don't think it got that saturated. You know, it's still quite a nice picture, albeit to my taste, a little bit too much. And like this viewer said as well, when you're using the display and you turn on the extra brightness, depending on the situation, of course, Wow, you know, insane quality. There really is nothing better in this form factor, I don't think. Now, when it comes to battery, you know, it's, I had a comment here from Garrett about, you know, the battery life. I have to say, I'm not having a great time. You know, I'm very cautious to complain about battery, especially in the first couple of weeks. But after that, right, it's been a month and a bit now, I was expecting better performance now. I always do similar tests and I don't, you know, turn things down or, you know, like turn off things like always on display. I leave everything on because I want to enjoy, you know, all the money that I spend on this phone, right? I want to enjoy everything that it has to offer. No low battery mode or anything like that. When I'm pushing these devices, I go to these extremes that normal people will do, right? If you're out traveling, you want to take photos, you want to take videos, typically you don't want to cut corners, right? So yes, when I'm traveling and using navigation, phone calls, you know, doing some work stuff, who would have thought, right? Phone calls. <laughs> 
But yeah, like Garrett, my S23 Ultra was awesome throughout from day one as well, right? There wasn't any updates required to get better battery for me. And this bad boy, still amazing even a year later. The thing is, some people are saying that the battery on the S24 Ultra for them is incredible. It feels to me that some optimization still required that, you know, not everyone is getting. Andy here sounds like he's going through hell with, you know, having to use low power mode. And to me, that's unacceptable, right? When you spend 1200, 1300 for, for a device like this, to be using low power mode this early in the life cycle is not great. An important question that I try to answer in all my videos because a lot of people are considering an upgrade, right? So this question is very relevant and I get this a lot. In this case, it's quite a targeted question, but I will answer it fully, right? The first question is, should I upgrade from the iPhone 13 for gaming? The obvious answer is yes, of course, there's a lot more capability on the S24 Ultra, a lot more processing power. You know, it's been two, three years since the 13, right? But I can't ignore the S23 Ultra or even the iPhone 15 Pro Max, right? I love the S24 Ultra and it's really easy for any tech creator to recommend the latest and greatest because, you know, that's what we're excited about. But I can't ignore the fact that the S23 Ultra is still an amazing device. And so is the 15 Pro Max, right? For playing games, you're not really going to go wrong with that. The 15 Pro Max, in my experience, did overheat a little bit more than the S24 Ultra when playing things like Genshin Impact or even the latest AAA games on the iPhone, right? I only tried one of them, but that did overheat a little bit. The other consideration is you already have an iPhone and I assume you might have another device like an iPad or an Apple Watch. So those things, you know, take those things into consideration as well because I know it's not easy to switch. So um, even though I love my S24 Ultra for what I use, we can't take for granted if you're already in the ecosystem and your family and friends as well. If I had to pick between the S23 and S24 Ultra, personally, I've got to pick the S24 Ultra just based on what I do. I do enjoy the new display. I love the new AI features. Some of these AI features, I thought they were going to be gimmicky, but they're actually quite useful for me. As a recommendation that I always give, right? We tech YouTubers get overexcited about tech, right? The S23 Ultra is insane still. And if the budget is tight, I'd say the S23 Ultra for me is gonna be the best value for money device. You know, when we go through the awards at the end of this year, we're gonna look at the S23 Ultra and, look, and still say, I think that's a great best value for money device. Not to mention the fact that the AI features that I enjoy today on the S24 Ultra, they are becoming available on the S23 Ultra soon. Quite a few things coming up. You may have spotted a new ring. There's a new watch here as well. I will but not say much. And if you don't want to wait for this, plenty more content on the channel already for you. And YouTube thinks you're gonna like this one over here. I hope to see you there.